Hello again, lovely people. We're back again with another update. Yes, another update. Um, I managed to get her back together, so I wanted to show that. I have not done the PS2 remote backpack yet. Um, I'm kind of hesitant because she's so nice and clean lined right now, but I may redesign it, may not. That's an, another story for another day. What I want to talk about is calibration. Since I'm back now at the point now that I have her back together, I do have to recalibrate the front legs because I did have them completely assembled. So I'm surely off a little bit and not matching my previous settings. And as I normally do, I'm here also to share a mistake with you. Uh, so when I put her back together, I had both front legs completely disassembled, so I had all six servos sitting on my bench, and like a dumbass, I did not check the labels that I have on them to make sure I put the right ones back in the right place. I got them correct as far as their position, but I got the legs reversed. So what that means is I'm faced with either take it apart and reassemble the whole thing, which I'm not going to do, or adjust my settings for each leg for those motors. But while I was doing that, I decided, you know what, now that I have more room here, we have more swing area. I was a little apprehensive of, of really swinging these legs before I did this extension because it's easy to lock the legs into each other. And sometimes they'll get stuck on each other and then you have problems with your servos burning out and everything else. So, that being said, yes, now that we're extended 50 millimeters, it gives me much more room to be able to swing these legs. So I decided to extend how much she can move between them. So if I go ahead and actually turn her on right now, <clears throat> you'll see the, sw the swing of the femur now is much more than it was. And the reason why I'm trying to do this is because, yes, one of my favorite moves, and surely a lot of you, is how the real Spot Mini can recover herself when she gets on her back without being able to get the knees past her back, or at least her foot. That's never going to happen. So I'm trying to push the femur, at least, to try and be able to pull that maneuver off if need be. But anyhow, that being said, let me show you what I did. So, first thing I did is recalibrated this leg to its new home position. And the way to do that is the foot should be right under the shoulder. A nice straight line. And then I decided that this angle here should just be a flat 90 degree angle. Now, it's not the easiest thing to measure and test because obviously our legs are not flat surfaced. But they are generally. So you can, you can pretty much wing it. And the, the real idea here is just to match them all the same. So regardless if this is not exactly 90 degrees, my task here is to get the others to line up exactly the same. So however you decide to do that. I was also at one point taking measurements beneath the feet, but for that to work, you have to make sure she's level and everything else. Really, I, I came up that come out of this learning experience that this is the best way. And I went through a lot of this with the hexapod, although it's a different leg configuration, it's still the same process. So again, foot should be lined up right below the shoulder, and then go for a 90 degree angle here, and that's your home position. So once you get your home position set for the three servos, now the coax, right now, there's really not much to homing that one. You just want it vertically level and then horizontally level. So it's sitting square on her body and the, her, the shaft of it is coming straight out. So that one's an easy one. But then from there you set these like that. So once you have one leg set with its home positions, then yes, you could start pushing the minimum and maximum settings for each motor as far as you can or as far as you're comfortable with. Again, in the case of mine, her femur has about a 180 degree swing, as you can see along this point. See that? And then the tibia. And the tibia, too, I've extended its range a bit. So now it goes pretty much straight out, and then I tuck it up as much as I could. Now, a good thing to note while you're doing this is watch your power supply. That amperage is awesome, yes, but I pushed uh, the 
this move here. I pushed this move a little too far one time. And yes, my amperage started going up to about 1, 1 1.2, and that's when you know, oops, I reached my limit and, and back it off a bit. So there, that, 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 that's what I've settled on with the tibia. I don't think there's much reason to go back much more, but I also don't think this joint could handle going back much more. The wire could get pinched or this piece of the elbow could get stuck in there. So, I'm happy with my min and max of tibia. I'm happy with the min and max of my femur. And the coax I will set later. I don't think I'm going to get much more play out of that than I do already. Because nothing's really changed in, in that. Remember, I'm doing this because of this design change. It gives me more room vertically or horizontally. But I have not um, secured my wires out of the way so they don't get pinched yet. So I don't want to mess with the coaxes right now. Okay, so now let's go to software for a little bit and then show you guys one more time of, of how I'm doing all this and how the numbers work. Okay, so I've shown this in a previous video. This is the script that I have that I calibrate the servos with. It's based on the example script that comes with uh, the PW, uh, PWM control board. Uh, and then I go ahead and set up a block for each one of my legs with all of the coordinates in it. That comes from the configuration file of my software, but you would normally do this before you have the configuration file created, right? You start here, you'll start off with generally round numbers, and then you'll tweak these one at a time, the home, home positions first, like I just explained. And once you're happy with those, then you go ahead and set and tweak your min and max for each of them. And then once I have one leg settled, then I take these numbers and plug them into this spreadsheet that I created, which I believe I've also shown, and this is on my GitHub. Once you have these numbers in for one leg, then all you need is the home positions for your other legs. And using these numbers over here, you can adjust the min, min and max of all your other servos to match exactly without having to go and fiddle with those one at a time. Okay, so I've gone ahead now and, and settled on this leg. That's why I marked it green, just so I remember. I'm getting old. I forget things like that. And then it, it calculates all this here for me. So these numbers have changed, as you can see. These used to be my numbers. I explained this in the other, other video, so I'll link to that in the description or a card above me if I can figure out how to do that. And uh, you can see that they're, they're the same numbers, right? They just flipped for left and right, negative and, and positive. Otherwise, they're the same numbers. So now that I've made changes to them, now my goal is to get that negative 165 to be negative 235, right? And the 75 to be 95. And the way I'll do that, obviously, is you just change these numbers here, and you can, like I said, fill all this out and get all your coordinates, or in this case, PWM signals, or pulses, all in here without having to go through all the calibration for each one. So then when I'm done with that, then yes, I come back here now and I'll take these numbers and plug them into the, my next leg and go ahead and test that. If it's off a little bit, you can tweak it. But I've found that, yes, these numbers here should have the same pattern to them. They should all be the same. And then you're good to go. Same with the travel distance for that matter. So you can see, I, actually, this is a good example right here to talk about. I just extended my travel distance for my tibias right, by almost 30 pulses, and then same here, a much bigger, greater difference for the femurs. So that, that's the difference that I just made between them. So now my goal again is to get all these numbers to jive with this set of numbers, and we're good to go. Okay, yeah, and the way that I do that is just one leg at a time. So now that I'm happy with this leg, I'll just comment this out, uncomment the right rear leg and go ahead and test that. And then as, as I also explained that I just start off first with them on their home position, which my little script here can do, and then I one by one will set them to sweep or run and then go from there. And last thing I'll remind you all of, I mentioned this in the pre previous video, especially your very first time 
do one motor at a time. So I would set all of these to zero, to be honest with you, right? To start your very first time, just set one motor up, give, set its coordinates, and then fire that one until you're sure. And the other thing to keep in mind is that the Arduino will never forget which servos you powered up. So if I if I set up my tibia and I'm happy with it and then I don't want to do, deal with that anymore and I set it to zero, it's still going to power up every time Arduino boots and go to its home position. So if, if your coordinates are off for that, you could have problems. So fully reboot. That means unplug USB, unplug power supply, and let it shut down to a hard boot, a cold boot. And then when you boot back up, it will not energize any other server servo except the ones that you have told it to. Okay, so just keep that in mind because I've run into problems with that too. I'd be testing one leg and then reboot it and forget that three other legs are energized and she goes haywire. So just this is a very intricate step-by-step -step careful process, especially in the very beginning. All right, guys, I guess that's all I have for you. And then the last side note is make sure you home your servers at assembly time because that's the first and most important step to this whole process. If you get that wrong, and that too I've explained in previous videos, if you get that wrong, you're going to have problems all, all the way through this next process. So. All right, everybody, any questions, feel free to put them in comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you kindly.